Welcome to the Japan Combined Cup, where Tomoro Narasaki defends his title as the king of the combined format against Kokoro Fuji and Yoshiyuki Ogata. Men's number one was a very aesthetically pleasing problem. Nice big holds and very aesthetic moves as well. Featured a nice traverse to the left, crossing your right hand, big cut loose, into a very, very tricky finish. Decides to try a right hand on this volume, but doesn't feel very comfortable. Very close, but he doesn't get it. Here's an alternate solution. Here, this climber uses his right heel to kind of like swap with his right hand. This enables him to rock his hips over. and snag a very nice top. Kokoro Fuji blowing the holds for good luck starts on this boulder. Being a taller climber, he decides to go right hand first into this 360 volume before the left on the clean. It's a slight variation. Coming over the right hand cross, he has to adapt a little bit being slightly taller. He tries to go for this right hand edge on this volume but kind of dry fires. On his next attempt, he adjusts by putting his left foot smearing a little bit lower enable him to come up but his knee is blocked and he has to twist his knee right under the volume to grab the top. The oh. Narasaki here, being a bit more dynamic, might find a more dynamic solution to the top. In his first attempt, he tries to power through but doesn't get it. But on the second attempt on the right side, he adjusts by using his feet more. His left foot smears hard on the wall and generates power through pushing from his left foot first before bending his right arm. Here we see the other athletes topping boulder number one. Tomoaki Takata using the Kokoro Fuji method. Men's number two was a slab problem. It was very complex actually, with very small holds, a lot of footwork going on. Yoshiyoki Ogata could not find a way to decipher this tricky puzzle onto the zone. Kokoro Fuji coming in, pressing into the volume, Using both palms to free his right foot. Really opposing forces on the wall and the volume. And manages to grab the top. Tomorrow Narasaki here doing a different beta. He uses his right foot higher instead of crossing over. But he opts to swap feet. Almost slips there, but he does a nice save. Pressing into these two holes, he has to find a way to get his feet across. He decides to keep his feet on the wall, swapping his feet again before moving his right foot on that higher foothold. At this point, he's feeling pretty comfortable. But the next few holds are really, really small and in awkward positions. Froggy styles across and manages to get the top. Men's number 3 was very difficult, especially at the second section. Oh. 
Kuro Fuji goes in for this left karate kick, resembling free solo's boulder problem move, and moves in, but he decides to lock his hip. <laughs> so he's kind of stuck in this position. Now that sloper up there, the zone sloper, super bad. We have those in my gym and they are a menace even on slabs. Manages to find this frog position. Oh, but doesn't snag the double hand switch. Tomorrow Narasaki, trying a different way to get across. His left hand's a bit too low on the volume, so he really has to thrust his left hip across just to make it on the other side. But instead of locking his hip into the volume, he kind of twists drop knee into the corner. Although this looks pretty good, it's actually not a very nice position to transition to the right side. Now we see Ogata here on the right side of the screen. He traverses across. by some toe hook action but doesn't need to. key here is that Ogata gets the left hand very high on this black volume. This allows him to very statically control his left foot across. He uses the tension between his hands, keeps it low, waiting on the very bad sloper. And manages to secure a position for the top. Comparing these two methods, Yoshioki manages to weight his hand on the sloper, allowing him to be more secure on that very bad sloper. Time for the lead climb. This first section was very enjoyable to watch. It's a very flowy, beta intensive and it looks very fun to climb as well. Now we reach a point where it's a rest position and Yoshiyuki Ogata opts to rest on this blue Taji Cheetah volume, whereas Tomoaki Takata on the left decides to rest on the green 360 volume instead. So two different rest positions. Now on the left, here is like the main crux of the route. Tomoaki Takata trying to use a double heel action but doesn't get enough momentum to generate his right foot across. Yoshiyuki Ogata here has a right foot on the volume but is like smearing against nothing and slips off. Now we have Tomoa and Kokoro Fuji side by side. Kokoro Fuji here on this second clip decides to go left hand and then with a high left foot. Whereas Tomoa Narasaki uses his left foot, swaps with the right and swaps again. Comment down below which method do you think is more efficient. Coming into this rest position, Tomoa Narasaki doesn't stay long on this Taji volume. Kokoro Fuji, on the other hand, decides to rest here for a while. Tomoa Narasaki preferred to rest where Tomaki Takata rested, which is on the green volume instead. Coming into this section, Kokoro Fuji decides to right hand across and left foot swing across, whereas Tomoa Narasaki decides to hold the swing and campus across instead. Here at the crux, you have to find a way to secure the feet. Kuro Fuji here swings out and very strongly using his core gets across to the right. Tomorrow Narasaki tries some right heel action but it fails him and slips. Kuro Fuji actually grabs the left undercling here but doesn't count and slips. See you in the next one, let's climb together. <laughs> 